This is Johnny and Jose with Tiger Bomb MMA, and today we'll be going over Bellator 259 Cyborg versus Smith 2, the anticipated rematch, the blood feud between these two will be finally settled in the Bellator cage. Uh, we'll be going over, I, I would say, a majority of the main card, just because, uh, for one, I don't know too many of these people. I don't think either of us really know many of the people fighting on the card and um, i'm personally recovering from the trip to houston from ufc 262 well brett johns is fighting i completely forgot about brett johns versus danny sabatella it's it's interesting brett johns retired from the ufc with a win over montel jackson and then he mysteriously unretired when he got signed to bellator it's like what like how does that work like you you were in the ufc and then you retired like oh hooray and then he gets signed to the to the Bellator, and it's like I'm unretired now. And then it's like that's very suspicious. It's almost like the competition in the UFC was a little too tough for old Brett Johns, and which is nothing wrong with that. I, I'm I'm just joking around, of course, but um, it, it's interesting for him to think like, man, I got my ass beat by Aljamain Sterling and Pedro Munoz. Before that, I was undefeated, and. You know, he he beat Tony Gravely and then he grapple fucked Montel Jackson. So maybe he thought like, man, I got to find a way out of my contract and try to become champion at Bellator. And I think that's what he's trying to do, of course. Like, come on now. He's 29 years old. He still has a lot left in the tank, but he's fighting Danny Sabatello, the Italian gangster. He talks a lot of shit for being a small Italian. <laughs> uh, I just made myself laugh when I said that. I've I've never heard that said ever. A small Italian is very much talking a lot of shit. That that is pretty funny to me. But uh, yeah, he talks a lot of shit for being a small Italian guy. Maybe more so. Maybe he talks too much shit for being a small Italian guy. But uh, he he fought in the contender series where he talked a lot of shit and he couldn't back it up. He couldn't get a finish, and he just did not look impressive. And now he's talking shit about Dana White. And um, it's going to be an interesting fight. I think Sabatello has some skills, but he's not as skilled as Brett Johns is. Toss-up fight. I'll actually take Sabatello to win this one. I've, I've not been too impressed by Brett Johns overall. I think he's a very skilled guy. Very, very skilled. He beat Joe Soto with a calf slicer, for God's sake. That was very impressive about three years ago. But Sabatello, he's got a way of kind of uh, grinding you out with that with that really top heavy wrestling. So Brett Johns is a pretty good counter wrestler, but Sabatello, I think he's just got the, the grittiness to avoid any, any attempts for a submission from Brett Johns. So I got Sabatello, Sabatello to win by, uh, by decision. Uh, one, one thing I was going to mention is uh, Valerie Lareda versus Hannah guy. Uh, not, not a very high level fight, but after some attention that Valerie Lareda has gotten as a plate, I think they're going to hope that Valerie Loretta gets a win so that they can, you know, have another, um, you know, another potential Bellator star in the making because I think they're in, they're in desperate need of some. Fabian Edwards and Austin Vanderford, which in reality it should be Austin Van Zandt because that's uh, Paige Van Zandt's husband. And uh, it's a fascinating matchup. And the reason we're starting there instead of the actual uh, main card opener with Christian Edwards and Ben Parrish. I have no idea who those two are. I haven't been watching a whole ton of their their tape. Jaleel Willis versus Macon Mendonca. I've never heard of these guys. My apologies if you wanted us to break these down, but again, I, I didn't have the time to look into them and whatever. For this fight, though, Fabian Edwards versus Vanderford or Van Zant. Um, Interesting because we've got Fabian Edwards being the younger brother of Leon Edwards, who was, of course, that guy who got pieced up by uh, Street Jesus and made a meme of himself. And his last fight was a loss to uh, Costello Van Steens by a split decision. And that was fascinating because it kind of shows you that, you know, although he is Leon Scott L. Edwards. <laughs> I just remember that's not his name. Uh, even though he's uh, Leon Edwards' younger brother, he's not Leon Edwards. He doesn't have the same skill set. Although they are very similar, he's got quite a bit of time to develop himself to actually get to the point where his brother is. So I see the potential for him. 
Currently, though, Austin Vanderford is a very high-level grappler. He's been really dominating dudes on the ground. He's been doing a lot of the submission underground with Chael, and he's kind of been proving himself to be a, a pretty good force in Bellator and at the middleweight division. And, and the thing is that he's undersized for middleweight. He's five foot eleven, so that throws a wrench in any of that dynamic. Because if Baby and Edwards can really stuff the takedowns, which is a possibility, uh, he should be able to outpoint Austin Vanderford and get a decision. But if Vanderford does get maybe the the 16th takedown in his attempts and he gets Fabian down, it's not going to be a good time for Fabian. He, he does not have the same caliber wrestling or even submission defense to stop anything that Vanderford is going to do. And on top of that, if he doesn't win, he's not getting any. So he has to win this one. So Vanderford has to win, I, I would say, by a decision. I just realized something that, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Paige Van Zant used to date Cody Garbrandt. And I think Cody Garbrandt dumped her. And I find it fascinating because I'm looking at the picture of Vanderford on Tapology, and it's missing something because Vanderford has a tattoo on his neck. And it makes me think like she's not over Cody's like, hey, Austin, can you get a tattoo on your neck? I think it'll look cool on you. I was like, Mm, suspicious but yeah i've got and austin vanderford to win this one by being pussy whipped via decision yeah i was going to mention something along those lines of uh not only dating cody but uh you know what never mind i'm not going to get into that <laughs> we're going to get canceled if i mention it yeah as far as the austin vanderford fight uh, there's really not much that and the other fight uh, well this one especially it's going to be Mm, it's not going to be the most exciting fight on this card and I didn't you know mean to make it sound like it but I was like what the hell is Leon Edwards doing on this fight because you know I'm looking at it um, at, at the little picture of Fabian Edwards but yeah it makes sense I was going to I was going to say hey wait a second uh, anyway uh, Vanderford's going to just out grapple out wrestle this guy for three rounds not going to be the most exciting, but as you mentioned, he's got to get that poon. Not really much to say about that. Or the next one. I mean, but, you know, you can, we, we can move on to the next one if you want. Yep. Co-main event, Darian Caldwell versus Leandro Higo 2. Very easy and cut case for this fight. Uh, Darian Caldwell, superior grappler. He already beat Leandro Higo before with a yeah, submission of a guillotine. And I don't see this being any different because Higo has not really looked all that great, even in, with his wins. He won twice by submission. He beat uh, Sean Bunch by guillotine, and then he beat Ricky Bandejas by rear naked choke. Both of these guys would have been destroyed by Darian Caldwell. And I may sound like, oh, I love Darian Caldwell. I actually don't like Darian Caldwell whatever it is about his face bothers the hell out of me, but uh, he's training with Sanford MMA. Now he used to train with um, Dominic Cruz out there in San Diego, but his last loss was to AJ McKee and it's AJ McKee. What can you really say about it? He got caught in a very strange modified neck crank from the guard, very unexpected. So you can't really give, Darian Caldwell any shit he took him down immediately and unfortunately for Darian Caldwell he had no idea how much danger he was in uh, he got what I like to call the key lock or the McKee lock if you will by AJ McKee and it was a nasty nasty neck crank I was like oh my god he's tapping from holy shit he's tapping but no Elandro Higo I don't think he has anything to offer uh, Darian Caldwell is just a superior wrestler. We'll take him down. We'll submit him. I'm going to say first round rear naked choke. Uh, yeah, this is very similar or somewhat similar to the to the Vanderford fighting the, that you have Darian Caldwell being superior grappler wrestler uh, with the other guy having nothing uh, to counter that. Uh, I'll take Darian Caldwell by uh, Maybe guillotine uh, first round. 
in our main event. Again, the anticipated rematch between Leslie Smith and Chris Cyborg will be happening, what is it, Friday? Who cares? Um, yeah, Leslie Smith fought Chris Cyborg in the UFC, and there was a lot of uh, what you call unwarranted controversy coming from Leslie Smith, uh, going on saying that she wasn't knocked out and she had a fighting chance and this and that. She got her ass beat by Chris Cyborg, and it was just like not even close. Had it not been stopped, it would have been stopped eventually. And I don't, I really don't expect a lot of views on this video to be 100% honest with you and whoever's listening to right now, because it, when you see the title and it says betting predictions for Chris Cyborg versus Leslie Smith, I don't know what else you want to hear. You want us to say Leslie Smith's going to find a way to win against Chris Cyborg? Chris Cyborg's 35 years old. Maybe her chin's deteriorating. Maybe that ass whooping she got from Amanda Nunes might cause an opening for Leslie Smith to come in here and knock out Chris Cyborg or take her down and submit her. It is not going to happen. Like, There's certain fights where it's like sad that they're putting it on TV, like Leslie Smith versus Chris Cyborg. And part of me although I'm talking all this shit, part of me would love it to see Leslie Smith come in here and knock out Chris Cyborg, but it's not going to happen. It's so unfortunate that we have to watch this fight because we know how it's going to end. Chris Cyborg will eventually knock out Leslie Smith. And it's almost hard to pick what round because if Cyborg was getting paid, let's just say if she was getting paid Let's just say $1,000 for every minute she saves the viewing public from having to view this fight. She would go out there and knock her out in literally the first second of the first round. But Chris Cyborg has a way of playing with her food sometimes. Like, for example, with Tanya Evinger, she took her sweet-ass time knocking her out. And some might say Tanya Evinger is really tough. She, she is, but not that tough. And... I don't know if Chris wants to prove a point sometimes. Like, I want to thoroughly beat the crap out of someone. Maybe she gets off on beating girls in, like, later rounds. Who the hell knows? So you can't really can't really prop bet this one first round or even, even knock out her submission. Maybe Chris decides, I want a submission today just so it's, you know, diverse on her record. Who the hell knows? She can do whatever she wants. But for sure, this will not go the distance. Chris Cyborg will win by finish. Any round she wants, knockout more than likely, or even submission. I will I will go with second round to win by a knockout, but I wouldn't be surprised, of course, if it's submission. So if you are betting any sort of prop, just be weary on what you're betting. Because Leslie Smith, yeah, she she can get taken down. She can bet knocked down. She can get knocked out. She can get submitted. I will say, though, she is relatively tough. Like, I will give her that. She's a tough lady. She can take an ass whooping. So it might be, I don't want to say tough for Cyborg to knock her out, but it will be, I would say, like when you're going for a slight jog and maybe power running, you might break a little bit of a sweat opposed to like normally knocking someone out. Cyborg doesn't break a sweat. So I would say maybe a drop of sweat will come out of Cyborg's head. But I'll go with Cyborg to win by second round knockout. I'm going with Cyborg, uh, first round knockout. I think she's uh, psychically receiving all these messages, you know, for her to end it as quickly as possible and humanely as possible. <laughs> uh, we don't, you know, I'm not looking forward to Bellator feeding uh, another uh, tin can to Cyborg. It's going to be an easy payday. It's going to pay for her pool or her butler or whatever the hell she's going to put her funds toward. Uh, and they're going to look for a rematch with her, with uh, the lady that she won the title from, whatever her name is. Um, Julia Budd. Or maybe uh, Julia Budd. Yeah. Uh, or maybe, uh, you know, they're going to look to uh, have Kat Zingano in there and uh, try her uh, try her hand at, you know, getting her ass beat by Cyborg so that she can say that she got her ass beat by two of the most dominant females in MMA, getting her ass beat pretty quick. In the UFC uh, by Rousey at one time, uh, which you know we were at, and I was disappointed that that was the main event because uh, I think 
it was the rock gold and trt tour fight that fell out for the main event and then they unfortunately moved the rousey and Pat Tyson anyway, anyway uh, not to get off track uh cyborg is going to decimate leslie smith leslie smith is coming in here because she has some bills to pay she's like yeah fuck it got bills to pay sign me up to fight cyborg again uh, i don't think there's gonna be as much controversy uh we all know what uh how much leslie smith does not bring to the table um i, I don't know no, really can't break can't break this down there's nothing to break down um as far as this fight is concerned with cyborg she's gonna get another win another easy paycheck and they're going to have, you know, to figure out, they're probably just figuring out, like, who the hell we're going to match up Cyborg with next. So I'll take Cyborg, first round KO. Those have been our picks for Bellator 259, Cyborg versus Smith 2. Make sure you leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. It's been us from Tiger Bomb MMA. We'll catch you at the next fight.